All right, Brent Porcio, Adam Garcia, Stephen Godani. This is the at Top Velocity hashtag Pitch and Tips show where you go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you ask your question at Top Velocity hashtag Pitch and Tips, and we're going to answer it on the next episode. Hey, if you out there and you, and you really like the show, we really need some help driving more uh, interest, or just show us that you're that you like the show by subscribing to the show as well. That would be really really helpful uh, in what we're doing here, and we're going to keep this going for you. So, uh, what's the question for today? Alex Wright asked, what are some main concepts for short guys to master to throw harder? That's, that's a good question, but unfortunately, anyone under six feet uh, will never, ever throw hard. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't make up the rules, man. I'm sorry. Let's give it to you. All right, uh, we were just kidding, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, but there is more challenges for, for short guys, right, first. Well, is that, is that offending someone? Well, what should we say? Not short guys, we'll say. Um, height challenge. Height <laughs> challenge guys, right. Um, unfortunately, it is harder for guys that are shorter than others. You know, Adam, five miles per hour with this program in three weeks is not very common, um, and a lot, lot to do with his size, which makes it easier for him to do that. Also, too, when you look at big guys pitch uh, in the big leagues, a lot of them can get away with really average mechanics that if someone like me or, or Steven, the shorter guys, if they use that, um, they would really struggle with, uh, with ball speed. Um, but um, really, what helps a short guy and what a short guy needs to understand is that um, you're, you're going to have to overcompensate with more speed, power, mobility, and motor control. Basically, everything that drives ball speed, which we, 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 we preach, which we teach, and which we help you enhance in the 3X Pitch Velocity Program, you're going to have to do it at the top level. For example, if I take someone like Sonny Gray and I run them through an analysis, or a full breakdown, biomechanically, anthropometrically, performance-wise, they really rate all the way to the top. I mean, he's got some, he has perfect biomechanics. The timing of his movements are perfect. I gave him, in my timing rating, zero to five, he has a five, and I don't, not many guys have a five in it. Um, Tim Linskin was the same thing. Um, K-Rod, uh, who were some of the other small guys? Uh, uh, Stroman. Um, that was my first yeah. huh? Right, Stroman, you know, guys that, are under six feet in Major League Baseball, they are exceptional across the board. So unfortunately, that's what you have to be if you're that shorter guy. You're gonna have to just knock it out of the park in every aspect of a high velocity pitcher. So yeah, you got a harder workload. You're gonna have to work harder. Hey, go read the story of Dustin Pedroia and how he got to where he got. It's not an easy road, but it doesn't mean you can't get there. So you just got to understand you're the guy who's really, really got to put in the extra hours. And you know, if someone like Adam has, has decided to, to, to beat you and you're, he's a foot taller than you and work harder than you, uh, you're in trouble. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, you, the, the smaller guys, you're just going to have to really, really, really uh, put, put, put your, you know, your, the foot to the pedal and, and go at it every day. I mean, we'll get the opinions from the tall guy and, and the shorter guy. So. Um, at the same time, too, you know, let's not let the tall guy talk. He has enough good things going for him. But for the tall guy, I'm going to say if you can learn or you can train like a small guy and even try to pitch like a small guy, you, you'll dominate. Just like look at someone like Chapman. To me, he moves like a small guy, and he's a big guy. You know, mm -hmm. but so, yeah, like I said, you can't talk today. We'll let Steven talk. Go ahead. Yeah, so pretty much if you just look at the MLB, it's obvious there's more pitchers bigger guys you see a lot more of the bigger guys that are throwing harder that's why we're having trouble like naming some of the smaller guys because there's just not that many of them but the main concepts I think that you just have to knock out of the park with it like Brent is saying is you have to be more explosive you have to be faster you have to have more mobility you have to time your movements better you have to do everything better because it's just the way it is it sucks but smaller guys to produce the force if you take someone like Adam, 230 pounds, six foot seven, jumping 28 inches, that's a lot of force. Um, 
Because he's a bigger guy. With, a, with big levers. Yeah, do with big levers. And then you take someone who's, you know, I'm 160 pounds, five foot 10, and I jump 29 inches. It's not as much force as he's producing. It's just the way it is. So in order to throw 90 plus miles per hour, smaller guys are gonna have to be, uh, you know, closer to that 35 plus inch vertical jump. You gotta be stronger than them. You gotta be faster than you them. Gotta you gotta have more hips more explosive. More yeah, you gotta time situation. it better. Yeah. It's, it's the way it is. It is the harder road, but it's, is it impossible? No. Tim Collins, uh, five foot seven guy, Kansas City Royals, and he was, uh, had a 25 inch vertical jump. Uh, weighed like 135 pounds. He was like uh, five foot seven. Turned himself into a 38 inch jump athlete. Um, weighs 185 pounds and can touch 97 miles per hour. So it is possible. Don't give up if you're one of those guys. Keep working and over time you can reach those goals. But it is a lot harder than being yeah. Six and foot and seven. you know, give credit to Air Cressy for uh, yeah. doing that yeah. with with Tim Collins, which was really uh, an exceptional thing to see the guy at his size able to do that. Um, yeah, so smaller guys also too, you know, you've, you've got to really maximize your mobility and that's hard because a lot of small guys come in here very stocky. So think of yourself like a thick rubber band, okay? You can pull yourself back and put some power into it, but it's going to be really hard and that's where you do need the power to really open up that range of motion. But then also too, you got, small, you got short guys that, that aren't thick guys and, and they're not battled by that. They're just struggling with they don't have enough speed and power to really get the job done. Um, so, you know, like I always say too, don't be a guy five, eight, five, nine, who after one month of the program comes up to me and goes, I haven't gained any ball speed. It's like, I mean, come on, dude. It, it, you're, you're a guy who probably barely is a four month guy in this program. You're, you could be an eighth month guy. Mm -hmm. You got, uh, accept where you are. Don't, don't be expecting Adam's results in this program and you're a foot shorter than him. It's just not gonna happen. Okay, so um, that's another thing, small guys. Understand where you are and just say, you know what, I'm gonna be a Dustin Pedroia, Dustin Pedroia when I get there and I'm gonna outwork everyone and I'm gonna overcome everything. I'm gonna be the best across the board and I'm not gonna feel like I'm limited by my size. And I think that's the attitude you gotta take and really be a badass and go at it, you know? All right, that was a good question. That was a really great question. I know that, that's, that's, uh, that's a common issue for most guys and, and I hope this helps. If you have any more questions like that, go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Top Velocity, hashtag Pitching Tips. Uh, and ask your question on anything we're doing here or, or on pitching, and we're going to answer it on the next episode. Boys.